Welcome to the second part of this video series where we are designing a 1 kilowatt 400 volt brushless DC motor driver. We are using this design to demonstrate how to use Constraint Manager and also showcasing some of the new features in Constraint Manager. In this video, we'll be looking at setting physical constraints using constraint sets and routing differential pairs. And now the next step in our design is to set the physical constraints, so track width, uh, polygon connect style and via sizes and so on. And to do that, we go back to our constraint manager and under our physical tab, we can now make some changes and add new constraints. So uh, for the high voltage uh, net classes, these are also high power and they handle higher current. So I'd like to for start with by uh, increasing the max width of my traces so I can change that to 20 mil to carry more current and I can type in a comment high power and also I'd like to uh, perhaps uh, increase my hull sizes or maybe decrease them to 0.3 millimeters and um, I'd like to also change my uh, polygon connects so for the through hole connection I'd like it to be direct and I'd like it I'd like to increase my uh, the uh, thermal spoke width widths as well, so 20 mil, and I can also type in a comment, high uh, power. So these are uh, physical constraints that we've defined for only one net class here. Now I'd like to apply this these constraints, and I'd like to also apply them for all my other high power net classes. And so the quickest way to do this is to use constraint sets. So if you uh, click on the high voltage bus negative, and you can say save as constraint set, and I'm going to call this high power. And now uh, um, I can go to my other high voltage and high power net classes, and I can simply select this constraint, and Altium will automatically inherit all the constraints that we've set in this uh, constraint set here. And if you look on the right side here in your properties panel, Altium gives you a summary of the constraints that are included in this constraint set here. And now we can save our, cons uh, our uh, constraint file and go back to our PCB and design import changes. And you can see all of these constraints have been added now. And uh, if we want to test that our track width has increased, so uh, let's say I want to route this net here. And uh, if you hit pause, and you can see that Altium has now mentions the max track width of 0 0.508 millimeters. Uh, and you can cycle through all of these uh, widths uh, by hitting three on your keyboard. Now for my low voltage nets, um, for example, if I would like to route uh, this net here, uh, you can see I can't really get to it um, or just about uh, because my track width is too large for this footprint. Uh, and so if we now go back to our constraint manager and we can change the minimum track width for uh, for this uh, net, um, there's two ways of doing it. Either you can apply, uh, change the minimum width for the low voltage net class only, or you can change the minimum width for all net classes if you'd like to. Um, I'd like to only have it for our low voltage net class, so I can perhaps reduce this to 5 mil. Uh, and I go back to my design, import changes. And now we can demonstrate the new feature in Altium, which is auto shrinking. So I can see, as you can see now, Altium has does list my minimum track width of five mil. Um, but if you now have auto shrinking enabled, Altium, Altium will automatically shrink your trace just about here to, to be able to allow you to complete the routing. So if I do the same thing for this net here, maybe this one is you can see here Altium has just about shrunk it to allow this net to be routed uh, successfully. Now the next step in our project is to define constraints for our high speed, low voltage analog nets. If we go to phase A of our motor driver, I have a current sense and a voltage sensor, and both of them generate a differential current and sense signal that then goes into a analog to digital conversion stage. Now the way you define differential pairs in Altium is essentially how you name your nets. Um, 
Now, to, dif to create a differential pair, you need to use the suffix underscore p and underscore n, and both nets need to start with the same name. So C sense A, one ends with underscore p and one ends with underscore n. Uh, now, you can use either net labels or you can use ports to name your nets. Um, that depends on the project options that you have set. So if you go to project options, and I can see here I've enabled allow ports to name nets. And if you scroll down here, you can see how Altium detects the differential pairs based on the suffixes that you, that you have defined here. And the default are underscore P and N. Now, if you go to constraint manager and you go to electrical differential pairs, uh, if you right click anywhere here, differential pairs, create differential pairs from nets. And now uh, uh, Altium has uh, managed to detect our our differential pairs based on the namings uh, convention that we have set and i'd like to import all of those and now i can set constraints for my differential pairs i can either set constraints individual constraints for each uh, differential pair or i can select uh, i can change uh, the constraints for all of them if i click on this cell here at the very top uh, and that will change all the constraints for all differential pairs. So I'd like to, for example, reduce my track width to five mil and I'd like to have a nominal one of 10 mil. And I can save my constraint file if I go back to my PCB and I can import changes. And you can see here Altium has detected our differential pairs. And if you go to your PCB filter and differential pair editor, you can see here they are listed. So if I wanted to write this net here, I can go to my differential router and I can click here and if I hit pause you can see here Altium has imported correctly the track with constraints and I can continue my routing so and then I could like to go to the bottom layer here and I can continue all the way up here and go back to the top level perhaps you would want to bring those back up a little bit here and that's how we route our differential pairs and how we set constraints for them. And this is the end of our second video. In our next video, we'll be looking at routing the low voltage and high speed analog signals, specifically how we are going to set X signals, uh, setting custom topology routings and length matching.